Canada-U.S. Enhanced Resiliency Experiment, known as CAUSE, is a story about emergency organizations working together to test new approaches and technologies to enhance emergency management. CAUSE supports the Canada-U.S. Beyond the Border Action Plan to develop a shared approach to security and trade. The Canada-U.S. Enhanced Resiliency Experiment Cause three. Canada is our, is our number one trade partner. We share over 5,500 miles of border. So how can we actually share data? How can we take situations that don't recognize borders like disasters and make sure that both countries are both resilient enough to deal with it independently, but are prepared to get to deal with cross-border situations as partners? as allies. What we hope to achieve is a better uh, capacity and ability for governments to work together in addressing the kinds of demands that arise uh, in the context of, of emergency situations. And particularly, we want to make sure that we've got a greater capacity and enhanced capacity to be able to communicate and have that certainty that our systems will work together and that they will be interoperable. In disasters, timely, current and accurate information means saving lives. In 2014, Canada and the U.S. tested the use of new information and communication technologies in experiments simulating two disaster scenarios, a hurricane and a wildfire. A major storm bringing heavy rain and high winds is hitting the U.S. east coast on its way to Canada. In the hurricane scenario, the experiment explored the use of alerting communications and social media technologies in support of cross-border mutual aid, situational awareness, and recovery operations. In Nashua, New Hampshire, municipal officials shared information with digital volunteers and partner agencies such as the National Guard, state and federal officials in both Canada and the U.S. to build an overall picture of the impact of the storm and the response and recovery efforts. CAUSE demonstrated an operational capability for shared situational awareness of emergency incidents between Canadian and U.S. communication networks, such as the Canadian Multi-Agency Situational Awareness System, or MASIS. IPAWS, the U.S. Integrated Public Alerting and Warning System, and Virtual USA. Some of the challenges that are faced by first responders during a disaster are typically things like trying to share information, um, in many cases, trying to communicate with each other. In Halifax, emergency officials face similar challenges. At the very beginning, there's a, there's a void of information, uh, whether you're a responder or whether you're general public, there's still this void of information. One way to quickly access and distribute timely information is to use digital volunteers who can assist virtually from anywhere in the world. Teams of digital volunteers in Nova Scotia, New Hampshire and Texas participated in the experiment using information from mock social media platforms to assist emergency officials. So we're trying to bring this community of digital volunteers, emergency management officials, uh, as well as really um, also thinking about involving the public at large uh, to maybe um, make them more engaged in helping themselves during a disaster and, and recovery. But this new frontier of social media and digital volunteers is also creating challenges. Technical and policy issues to make systems work seamlessly across multiple jurisdictions during emergencies. Well, I think this is a great experiment that, given the fact that these are new media uh, that we can use, best to get ahead of it in terms of testing the, the validity, testing the speed, test the uh, information flow. Um, and gets people generally more comfortable with sharing that information. That they have medical issues, that they don't have any water, that they need assistance, and all that kind of information is additional information from social media. Public participation through social media during disasters is also driving a profound change of culture within emergency management, including organizations like the Red Cross. First responders are always going to be needed and organizations like the Red Cross are always going to be needed. But this advancement in technology sort of allows people to organize themselves without the benefit of those infrastructures and institutions. So some of the things that we're able to do today that uh, we weren't able to do prior to cause 
we're uh, really sharing of information between um, agencies here within the state of New Hampshire, as well as agencies that are out outside of this state and outside of this country. So it's very important for the fire services of this country, and especially the small town fire services, to realize the value of social media as a great resource in a, in, in a world where we have limited resources of being able to gather the intelligence required to make effective decisions in the, in the emergency operations centers when, in fact, emergencies do strike our small communities. And just so check with CPS is that it has been reported. Real time and dynamic information from social media can help empower decision makers to identify, employ, and provide mutual aid as well. Standards and capabilities and responsibilities are needed to help ensure critical information is shared between emergency managers. To this end, a national information exchange model for mutual aid resources was developed and tested during COS3. Look, we share a common border. We share um, a common uh, idea of protecting our citizens. So whatever it takes, we got to make it work. Wildfires are an annual threat in many parts of Canada and the U.S. Limited communications makes battling these blazes even more difficult. Cause 3 demonstrated how emerging mobile communication technologies can reduce these operational challenges. It's important that we have good, solid protocol in place and the ability to communicate to make sure that, number one, the responders are safe, number two, that we're, we're making sure that uh, we can contain these events uh, in an appropriate way. The beautiful thing about an experiment is if everything works, you've learned something. If things don't work, you've also learned things. So in essence, we win from these situations no matter what happens. In this experiment, researchers tested mobile systems that can be set up quickly in remote areas to integrate seamlessly with the communication networks of partner agencies. Like to retry with video? Get onto your guy again, use video this time. Task command to uh, SK2. How do you read me? SAS command is uh, very impressed. The experiment also successfully tested land mobile radio systems in Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Montana. The Alberta command uh, confirmed. The province is vast. We have lots of areas like this. We don't always fight these emergencies in our major cities. There's a lot of rural Saskatchewan, rural Alberta, and right to our south, rural Montana, that accidents can happen there and this is the perfect place to try the technology and see if we can make it work in an area we're not sure it will work. We're connecting systems across international borders, interprovincial borders, and being able to test how to do that, working out the idiosyncrasies of individual systems. Every minute and every second counts. So if you can enhance their capability of understanding and having awareness of what's going on around them, you're saving them time. So it's critically important, and this is really the purpose of this exercise. The experiment built a next-generation communications network that connected locations in Saskatchewan, Alberta and Montana to collect and transmit image, video and map information to enhance situational awareness. By doing this type of experiment, not only are we trying to learn more about what's going on and what we need to do in the future with our research efforts to improve capabilities, we're also working with national, local, provincial governments and others and non-governmental organizations that actually lead them with capabilities, lead them with solutions to these problems that are enduring beyond just the experiment itself. The COS3 experiment explored the use of social media and digital volunteers the use of next-generation communication and information-sharing technologies across U.S. and Canadian networks, and the use of next-generation wireless technologies for improved communications between U.S. and Canadian emergency responders. To me, it's all about um, society's ability to, uh, to deal with shock to the system and uh, the ability to bounce back from major disastrous events. So any technology that can help during the initial response phases, but also in the post-response recovery phases, uh, is, is relevant to, uh, to this particular experiment. Um, but also important is building relationships, not through, just through the technology, but building relationships of some of the key players during these events before an event happens. 
What the cause exercises have done with us is that allows us to work with our Canadian counterparts in filling those gaps in understanding where our alerting systems can work together, how our communication systems can interoperate, how our first responders in the field can build the trusted relationships that they will need, not only on the huge crises, but in the day-to-day -day crisis that affect our, our border communities every day.